Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. We're on to part six of my beloved P200. Going to cover replacement of all the cables and overhauling the front hub and forks. One thing you got to keep in mind, regardless of the mileage, this scooter may have very low miles. The grease just dries up, it turns into a cruddy hard mess and it wrecks havoc on components like the brakes, the cables, and the wheel bearings. So we're gonna go ahead and overhaul all those components, uh, replace the inner cables, overhaul the front hub, probably don't need to replace any of the bearings because uh, it's got such low mileage, but they all need to be packed with fresh grease. Uh, you want all these things to feel so buttery smooth like they should and not stiff where you're fighting it. I have so many old Vespas come in here and I'm like, come on, just step up to the plate, pay some money, replace the cables. You'll enjoy life so much better with fresh cables in a vintage Vespa where everything's buttery smooth. Um, yeah, there might be the latest and greatest better cables out there, but there's no replacement for grease. Grease it all out with fresh grease and everything's just so much smoother. All right, so we'll get onto the video and I'll quickly talk about part seven, the final episode of these very long videos here. So part seven will be covering replacement of the locks. It's kind of sad, but no keys were found for the scooter, so we got to replace the locks. Um, a little tricky to change out the column lock. And I'm just gonna button it up. Right now I'm not even sitting on the seat, but we'll put the last little bits, kind of button everything up, uh, give it a final cleaning, and then I'll do a nice long test ride and take the GoPro out, take it for a ride, and talk about the scooter a little bit and what I love so much about this scooter. And then I gotta let it go. Somebody, some lucky person's gonna end up owning the scooter. Uh, I know we've gotten a lot of calls. Uh, we're in January 2020. Happy New Year's, everybody. Um, but uh, somebody's probably gonna end up buying the scooter and have a nice original P200 in their collection. All right, enough talking, let's get on to the video. So in order to set yourself up for success, it's always good to have parts on hand. I'm pretty familiar with doing this job, so I have a good idea of the parts I need. Let me go over those parts I'm gonna have ready to go to do the job on the scooter. So I have a pair of the same cables. You may ask, why do I have two clutch cables? Well, the front brake cable is pretty much an identical cable. These are the solid barrel cables, they're pretty easy to use. Our part number on this is cab-ic. For the rear brake cable, typically these last a long time, but I'm going to dismantle the brake pedal and re-grease it. I'm going to go ahead and replace the brake cable. Part number on the brake cable that's specific for the P200, it has this loop on it. This is CAB, C-A-B-I-R-B-2. And when you change out that cable, it's got a small um, pin that retains the pedal or it connects the pedal to the loop. There's also a cotter pin that retains the pin from falling out. Part number on the replacement pin is 012761. Um, I'm gonna have the front hub apart. I'm sure the brake shoes have plenty of good life, but they're ancient brake shoes. They're probably asbestos laden, so we really don't wanna sand on them or clean them up. I'll just replace them. Actually, they probably aren't asbestos being um, late 70s, but. Uh, probably end up putting new brake pads on it. Replacement brake shoes for the 10 inch large frame Vespas, 072339, nice original Piaggio ones. We have other options available, you know, higher performance brake pedals. Uh, anytime you dismantle the hub, say if you're just doing a basic brake job, I'd always recommend replacing the front hub nut on this scooter. This is 16 millimeter fork, which is the, the size of the fork pin or the axle pin. Uh, later they went to a 20 millimeter size, but for the uh, 16 millimeter um, axle, they use this style nut that you peen um, to lock it in place. So they use a punch to peen it. Part number on this replacement nut is 126409. If you have the 20 millimeter fork, uh, you just need a cotter pin. They have a better setup on the later forks, but we're dealing with the early ones. I'm gonna re-grease the hubs. Gonna replace the seals inside the front hub and you know, kind of grease up the wheel bearings. 174863 is the part number for, um, or 
174363 is the oil seal for the inner hub. And farther into the back plate, there's another oil seal and O-ring back there, 174A87, and the O-ring that goes on the very back. And part number that is 285536. So these are all the parts I'd have on hand if I'm gonna dismantle the hub along with replacing the cables for the brakes. Let's jump into the project. I'm not gonna go over the tools, all just basic hand tools, nothing special here. So the first thing you want to do is disconnect the front brake cable. Um, anytime you pull the cable all the way out, I just recommend replacing it. I could theoretically, I could re-grease this cable, probably thread it back through. But it, even at this point, I see one, um, one part of it fraying on the outside and that will never go back through the cable housing. But in order to disconnect it, uh, we're going to have to pull the cable. I could just cut it. A lot of times if I'm trying to quickly get through your job, I just cut the cable out. Check this out. When you pull the brake, check how slow that thing is to return. Actually, it didn't even return this time. <laughs> the grease is so hard, you can't even ride this thing. You pull the brakes one time and the front brake drags, and that's pretty typical if, if the front hub has never had the grease change. 11 millimeter socket. This is a pinch bolt here, so you'll see the cable will just come free. You know, be careful if it is a frayed cable, they'll, they'll tend to get you. But for right now, I just want to have it loose and disconnected. We'll come back to changing out the cable because I'm going to move on to the hub and uh, dismantle the hub. But you want to loosen this up because oftentimes if you have worn brakes that are adjusted tight, uh, you won't be able to get the hub off too easily. So go ahead and get the grease cap off. You know, just carefully stick a flat bladed screwdriver underneath it and just give it a little twist and it will pop right off and that can be reused typically. You can see the original nut, it's been kind of flattened or smashed down. It's probably never been apart. No problems there. If you're wondering what this screw is, it's an actual inspection cap. It's only found on the American market uh, T-series scooters, so you can inspect the brake pads. It was something they mandated. Uh, nowadays, you got disc brakes on modern stuff, so you can see the brakes you know, pretty easily, the, the life of the brake pads, but that's the way they did it back in the day. So that's all it takes to get that off. I mean, you could use a hand wrench, there's no puller per se to get that off. So just took a couple taps and it finally uh, came loose. Just the older grease sometimes kind of holds it in place. If you're really struggling with it, well then the brakes are hanging up. So let's see how it looks inside here. There's your brake, brake shoes, a little bit of rust and stuff on the inside of this uh, hub. You know, no big deal, we'll sand that up. And the grease, you know, actually, for the most part, the grease in these needle bearings is remarkably in good, good shape. But I'll wipe out the, uh, the most amount of grease I can take out. If you need to change out the bearings, there's a needle bearing on this side. That's just uh, press fit, and then if you flip it over, you have a ball bearing. This thing is perfectly smooth, feels really good. A, you know, a shielded or sealed ball bearing on the outside with a circlip that holds it in. Of course, you have to knock those out. Um, they typically last a really long time. Don't really see uh, wheel bearings fail on Vespas. Uh, you could always, if you wanna hear how the wheel bearing feels on this side, the needle bearing tends to hold up better than the ball bearing, but you could put it on the end of the axle and and give it a spin, you know, if you get it in there a little bit further. You just get it on the end of the axle. And it's quite, quite silent, so no issues there. But I'll probably finger out the most amount of grease with a rag, put, put fresh grease upon putting this back together. Uh, the grease in here actually doesn't look too bad. But the problem is the, the pin. I'm going to take this apart anyways, just to put brand new fresh grease in there. No issues there. Uh, even the brake shoes, like I said, you could sand them up. They have plenty of life, but brake shoes are inexpensive. We're just going to put new ones on there. So we'll start by getting the brake shoes out of here. These are the Omega Clips. Uh, you can grab them with a good pair of needle nose. See if I could pull them off while I'm off to the side. Uh, if you don't have these on hand, I would suggest having you know, they're very inexpensive just to have them on hand, but I'm gonna kind of just lever it off, kind of off to the side of the camera so it's 
a little difficult to do, but see how I'm just levering it off of the nail nose? And then make sure you grab it and they don't go flying. So two Omega clips are off. Uh, I've showed changing the brake shoes on Vespa. Sometimes if I'm just gonna throw these pads away, I'll put a screwdriver right here and give it a, a whack with a hammer and break that. And then you don't, you don't twist up the spring, but if you're gonna carefully take it off, uh, the best way to do it is don't fight with kneel nose or twist up your kneel nose. You wanna get um, a dikes in there. And since it's hardened steel, you're not gonna cut through this easily, but kinda in a twisting motion, you can get the, um, the, the um, spring right out. Yeah, I kind of twist it off and didn't damage the spring at all. You know, it's just a little bit, sometimes it pops up a little bit, no big deal. Those feel pretty good. These are in pretty nice shape. But oftentimes I've seen where these rust onto the shoes. If that's the case, you're gonna have to heat this up. Uh, maybe spray it with some type of lubricant to get those off, you know, uh, no issues there. But the issue is this thing, look at this. I can't even barely budge that thing. So I may have to heat it up to get that out. Let's just see if some taps will. I can tell you if I heat it up, it would be a lot, a lot more effective of getting it out. But um, that grease is really, really quite hard in there. And I'll use a punch to kind of send it all the way through. There we go. And the grease here, there should be grease. It's all the way dry and pretty much the grease is probably pla plasticized. You know, just kind of dried up over the years and that's what the problem is. This cable's got the one fray so it's gonna be a little difficult to get this off. But there we go, we'll go and clean that part up in the parts washer, there's a spring. Sometimes that spring isn't present. Uh, next we're gonna take apart the hub. So you have the clip in here, you take a set of circlip pliers much like this, set it on expanding motion so when you squeeze it opens up and carefully be, get between the holes and pull it off. And I'll tell you, a lot of times you overstretch them like I did with this, you don't really want to ever reuse these. I mean, you could in a pinch, you could probably squeeze them back together with a set of kneel nose, you know, they'll take some tension back, but not a good idea. This is what's holding the hub on. So we'll discard that part. We're going to go ahead and replace it when we put it back together. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and replace the seal. It looks original. Let's get a flat blade screwdriver under there. And you could sometimes twist between the metal or you could just in a prying motion, it will eventually come off like that. Uh, you got a pair of uh, bolts and nuts that hold the shock to the back plate, 13 millimeter. So we'll get 13 millimeter socket and wrench and loosen that. So from the back side is where the nut goes and there's also a split washer. Uh, I would suggest replacing the split washer when you take it apart. Or when you, uh, excuse me, when you put it back together. And the lower bolt is always a little more difficult to get out. You can see it's kind of loosening from the shock, so you're, you're good right there. Cables are still attached, no big deal there. We'll sh I'll show you how to remove the speedometer drive. Now the hub should just pull right off. And you have the front brake cable pulls out. And it's a little stiff. It's an old cable there. And now we have access to the speedometer drive cable. You take an eight millimeter socket. Don't worry about that O-ring that just fell off because we'll go ahead and replace that. And the way this works is it, uh, this metal plate that's held in place with a single bolt kind of compresses a rubber bushing that that squeezes down on the cable. So get the cable out. Um, I may replace this adjuster with just a nice brand new shiny one. This is the original one. That's not that bad actually. I put that back in, but if they're really rusty, I'd replace them. 
I just like this one because it's the original one. I'm going to re reset it back to pretty close to its, um, its original position so you have adjustment as the brakes wear. You know, a lot of times there's a lot of initial adjustment when you put a new cable, new brake shoes, you may need to do quite a bit of adjustment. There's the plate. Go ahead and pull the rubber seal that, that goes down onto the, uh, the, the speedometer cable. This part's replaceable. This one's still in pretty nice shape. It's, the rubber's all protected while, you know, in this hub. So it's not really exposed to the elements. It's a little difficult to get out compared to normally what they are, but it should come right out. And the next part is a steel insert that holds the speedometer drive gear. You can see that helical cut worm gear in there. That's a plastic gear. Push it right out and now you can pull the gear right out. If the speedometer doesn't work, Look for stripped teeth on this. This thing looks like it's in really good shape. So just clean it up, put it back together. So the other parts you're gonna pull out, there's a thick washer here with a flat on it. On the axle itself, there's gonna be a thin washer. And sometimes it's a little stuck to the, the arm. If that pulls right off, we'll clean that up. Uh, you want to check these bearings. Uh, this is completely sealed. If you need to replace it, you need to take the fork out and press these out. There is a, a tool that will do that. It is possible to do it while it's in the bike, but a lot of work. I'd typically just drop the fork. Um, no, the shocks are still in pretty good shape. Remarkably, they use really high quality shocks and you know, I know a lot of people want to replace the shocks, but the original equipment shocks um, they hold up for quite a long time. I'm not saying they're the best shocks out there, but they work, work better than other scooters of the, the era, in my opinion. So, clean the grease off the axle. Axle looks to be in really nice shape. No scoring or anything. Um, this hub, just kind of want to get all the old grease out. Just use your finger with a glove or a um, screwdriver get most of the grease out. Then I'll move over to the a parts washer and clean all these parts up in a, a parts washer. And once I have all these parts cleaned up, I'll be able to reassemble it um, with fresh grease and new brake pads or brake shoes. So use the same brake pads because I deal with more modern Vespas nowadays than, than um, the vintage ones that all nearly always have uh, drum brakes. You have some scooters that were way ahead of his time, you know, like an SX200 Lambretta had a mechanical disc back in the 60s. Uh, we're going to replace this seal, just like that other seal, we'll pry it out with a screwdriver. Uh, these needle bearings feel pretty good. Again, if they have contamination from water or they're just on a really high miles or old bike, you may need to replace them. There are certainly, we have all those parts in stock. And just pop the seal out, just discard that. So like I suggested in the previous steps when I did the electrical diagnostic, I didn't bother buttoning up the headset top. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the front brake cable. This would be the same process if you're just changing a cable. Uh, underneath this screw is an eight millimeter um, headed nut or it's five millimeter nut needs an eight millimeter um, wrench of some sort. Go ahead and loosen the lock nut and then just back out the screw. And I figured I'd do all this because I'm going to clean all these parts up as well. So, you know, they're all greased. The nut comes out and then the, the step bolt continues to thread into the handlebar casting. Uh, sometimes the, the threads are completely blown out, not really an issue. It's a single nylock nut under there. And put your hand underneath because there's going to be a, uh, typically three washers that are going to drop off. So on the lower half, there's a small hole washer. On the top of the lever is a larger hole washer, and then there's a wave washer. And the same goes with the clutch cable. I'm going to clean these parts all up along with the 
clutch lever has got the sole grease on there, but the lever's in great condition. Original Piaggio, it's got the little stamp. Most, most of these scooters don't have the original levers. They've fallen over and broken the lever over the years. So this is the front brake cable in. It's gonna be pretty difficult to pull this area that's kinked up. So before we pull the old cable through, um, if the cable's just broken in the housing, you don't have this choice, but uh, just to keep any of the frays from going through the housing and ruining the housing, just take a really good set of diagonal pliers or uh, cable cutters and when you snip it, it will make a pretty clean cut. Now we'll be able to easily pull the cable out. And I can tell that thing is so dry and crunchy. Um, like I said, you could probably carefully pull the whole cable out, but it's not really just not worth the effort. Just put a new cable in with fresh grease and you'll be good to go. Um, on these original P200s, they have a short cable. This is an electrical switch for the brakes. Um, the European market never had that on them. So that's kind of a unique, um, unique switch. This is your uh, speedometer cable. Already lubricated the inner cable. I did that earlier um, in one of the prior videos. Uh, I'm gonna show another little trick that I like to do. I wanna keep all the original cables on the scooter. It's in really, they're in really great shape. But the problem is the housing yellows a little bit. So I'm gonna pull the whole cable out and I've done this in the past. This cable housing's in excellent shape. We'll see how this side's yellow. I don't want to see that anymore. So is what I'm going to do is feed it back up. And this side that was on the top has less yellowing, see, so you'll see more of the, the nice original cable. So just reverse it, symmetrical on both ends. And there's a tube, the hole that you just feed it right back up, easy enough. And We'll just leave it like that, so, and put that back in a switch. Uh, another thing I want to do, see how this is just pretty stiff and grimy. I did spray it with a little lubricant earlier. Uh, just best is to take it all the way apart. So go ahead and roll the clip over, and then pull this pin, pin out. So, so get the pin out of the way, then you got this uh, nylon pulley pulls right off, still has a, the throttle cable connected to it, no, no issues there. And go ahead and clean up all these parts. So there's a flat washer, and next there's a wave washer, slide right off. And this little spring right here, this is your return spring for the throttle. And you may need a needle nose to kind of get that out of the, out of the way. So you get that out and see how it engages into the, um, the tube right here. Just go ahead and dismantle this, uh, this clip that goes into the tube. Then you'll be able to pull the whole tube out. And if the scooter's been painted, sometimes these tubes are really difficult to get out because somebody would do a paint job with the tube in the scooter, which is not a good idea. And it's got grease on it, but I'll clean it off and put fresh grease along with uh, clean the bore out. So. Along with the front hub parts, I'll clean all this. This shifter is a little bit more difficult to get apart because you have the cables for the, um, the light switch that are connected. You'd have to pull those out of the horn cover. This feels much better. I don't really um, have much issue with that. I did spray some grease in there. You could pull the clip off and pull the two back, you know, out a half inch and that's enough to get fresh grease in there as well if you wanted to. But the spray grease seems like it's doing the job in here. This one's just easy to dismantle so I'll, I'll clean these parts. I went ahead and dismantled the clutch cable as well. Exactly the same as the front brake cable. I just cut the cable and you're able to retrieve the cable clamp much easier. Pull the lever screw out and pull the cable out and I'm left with this housing. This housing doesn't look to be in as good a shape as I was hoping. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace the housing and we'll, we'll cross that path further down in the video. The last part I'm gonna dismantle is the rear brake pedal. So with the rear brake, I use uh, aircraft cable cutters, clip that kind of bent end that was into the cable clamp. And you have either connections or they're soldered in place uh, for the rear brake cable. And you're able to feed the housing through so you can see the housing 
pop right through here and you can pull the inner cable out. So you'll need a seven millimeter wrench to separate the electrical brake switch. We know there's no issues there. Um, just held by the single screw and then there's a rubber gasket on the bottom. Uh, two little washers, no issues there. Uh, just typically it's a little difficult to get off because the gasket kind of sticks to the switch. And this one's definitely stuck pretty good. So you can carefully, you gotta be careful because it is a plastic switch. Just give it a little pop. You see the brake switch, the wires are soldered to it, so you can't easily separate that. Pretty simple and robust design, but here's the brake pedal. We'll go ahead and dismantle this brake pedal. Uh, I'm gonna re-grease the pin in this as well. So you have the brake pedal assembly. This does pivot pretty good, but I wanna put fresh grease in there. No big deal. There's a, a pretty light return spring for the brakes, and you could probably just use kneel nose on this, this return spring. Just go ahead and disengage it. And I was mistaken, these early P200s, they don't use that loop style cable. They use the same kind of cable that's used on um, the older Vespas, just a cable on both ends, there's not the loop. The later ones have the loop that just goes right in here. Um, this one has the cable clamp, but you can retrofit it with the loop. The loop is a little more robust than this cable clamp setup, so we'll go to the newer setup. Pull the, uh, the cotter pin out of this. And once you move, it's a lot easier without the, the brake spring in place. It is possible to do without the brake spring. Pull the pin out. So it is, you could just replace this with the older cable. The newer uh, loop style cable is uh, like a better design used on all the later P200. So you'll never see that part. I wanna put the better part in there. So that's what we'll do. Disengage the spring. The spring has a longer hook end that goes onto that pin in there. And in order to take these brakes apart, you may need to do this on a better work surface than this and you may need to heat the pedal up too. So from this end, where there's the pair of holes, you can take a punch and you'll be able to dry this pin out. And that one was actually pretty easy. Sometimes when the grease is really hard or there's rust on them, they're nearly impossible to take apart, so. But you could, I could tell you right now, there's not really much grease on this. This thing should be all greased up. It's gonna cause problems down, down the road. So I'll clean all these parts up I'll be back in a moment with a bunch of cleaned up parts. All right, got all my parts clean. Like I said, I was gonna replace the clutch cable housing for the clutch. Uh, two ways to go about this. You could clean the, the old cable very carefully and put a very thin layer of tape or like put duct tape on these vertically and grease the outside of the duct tape and push the new cable as you're pulling the old cable. Uh, my preferred method of changing an inner cable when you have an old cable in place, I'm not talking a, a bare frame like you're restoring. I have a inner cable that's like maybe 130, 140 uh, inches long and I'll thread it through my new cable all the way through. And if you're looking to buy like bulk cable, we do have this available or you get a bike shop, you could buy bulk cable and buy whatever, 15 feet of this or something and you'd probably be okay. And it has a barrel on the end, but I'll go ahead and pull this cable all the way through. It's a little bit curled up, but it doesn't really make a difference. And with the old damage housing, as long as the housing isn't so damaged that you can't feed a cable through it, and feed this feeder cable through. And once it pops out on the other end, it's pretty simple from here. You just pull the cable, the inner cable, and we'll pull the new cable right through. So if you're having difficulty pulling the cable through, it may be because there's some damage um, outer uh, vinyl sleeving on here and that's just causing it to bind up. 
and you could just cut that off the old cable. You know, it's very thin. And just the act that's bunching up, you know, it usually causes the problem. So kind of once you pull it away, the cable's more readily gonna slip, slip right through. So get that out of the way. Now I have a fairly smooth cable. That's an older cable. The new cable obviously has a perfect new housing, so no issues there. And sometimes it takes a little bit of force, especially in the section right here. You may need to look down where the cables intersect and just see if your uh, cable ends getting caught up. And sometimes you'll just have a couple little hurdles. Like I said, the cable is the best method. If you do tape and lose the cable halfway, um, it's definitely gonna make the job a lot, a lot more difficult, so. And we're getting pretty close at this point. And now the cables pop through. At this point, I have the old cable is out and the new cable's in. So, you know, I'll probably pull more of this housing down, but now we have the housing approximately where we need it. So. so as we feed the new cable, we're gonna wanna put a light grease on it. I usually use the blue grease. Um, this is like a lithium uh, or calcium based grease that's got like a white color to it. Much like the original uh, color, you see the grease exposed on the, um, you know, on the lever a little bit. And you'll start by feeding the cable through the little hole here. It will pop through the window on the backside and I don't even need to grease the first little part. Once you get that in there, just take a little dab of grease and it only needs a small amount of grease, especially this is a newer style housing. It's got a Teflon line, so it even has a smoother feel than with the original cable would. But I kind of like those original ribbed cables. Just I didn't really want to leave that housing that was in questionable condition seeing seeing that so just a light light coat of grease all along the cable it doesn't take much at all and let's see leave the last little bit i could tell just pop through no no issues there and go ahead and pull some of the cable and then you pull it right to where it it ends. And at the last little bit, you want to make sure the barrel, the flat of the barrel is, is facing up. Is, if the cable's twisted, you're going to have uh, problems. So we'll take our cleaned up lever and grease both ends along with where the pivot pin goes. Put a little grease there and grease the last little bit of the cable. Cable engages. And at this point, I can go down at the bottom and pull the cable all the way in. We're pretty close, so. So I take this, the small washer goes on the bottom. And the flat washer goes against the lever and the wave washer goes between the handlebar casting and the lever. And it takes a little bit to get, get that seated in place. And if you have a Phillips screw, screwdriver, you can go ahead and just stick it right in there and that will get everything to line up just perfectly. You know, instead of fighting with those, uh, those washers and go ahead and thread the, the screw in. And once the threads are exposed on the bottom, you could start the, the nut onto the, the threads. And I'll show you the correct point. I haven't tightened the, the cable just yet. So typically you wanna go all the way down with this screw. And if you have it that tight, the lever binds. So then back it off about a half turn or a quarter turn. 
Lever is fine. Hold the screw. And then go ahead and install the, the nut. And don't, don't over tighten it because it will strip, strip the, um, the threads out of the handlebar ca you know, casting right there. And it's nice when they're all intact. I mean, the lever pivot will work just fine without that. Lever's really smooth right now. I can just tell that no problems there. So the cable's all threaded through. You have your adjuster right there, the cable housing. I'm gonna pull the inner cable through, thread it through the adjuster that's been reset. It's all the way in, no, no issues there. It was actually pretty close to that to begin with. And go ahead and feed the cable through. Next, we'll take our cable clamp and I'm tapping it because there is like a little steel insert in there, a little slug. I wanna make sure that's uh, down. And you can see there's a chamfer on this side of the hole. That's the side of the hole that goes towards the, um, the clutch lever. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hand tighten that. It's my uh, fourth hand tool, or third hand tool, whatever. And you see how it gets to a point where there's just a little bit of free play. You feel the first springiness of the lever and that is the, um, the little spring, but not the clutch spring. And then the heavy springs are the clutch, the clutch spring. So I have this uh, smaller set of wrenches so you could easily get into these little tight areas. It's eight millimeter to hold the adjuster typically and then a seven millimeter to tighten it. And it just needs to be just like that. Yeah, you don't need to over tighten it because you will cut the cable with the uh, cable clamp if you over tighten it. So, and if we need to make any fine adjustment, we still can do that with a lever. Two ways to go about the cable. Typically I'll cut them clean and solder them, but if you don't have that means, you could certainly curl it up. You don't want to have that tail dragging on the ground. Um, that's acceptable as long as it stays out of the way, but I'll come back to this later when we put new all the rest of the cables in come back with a little torch and braze or solder all the ends so they're nice uh, finished cable ends that won't unravel. But there's your clutch cable. So got all these parts cleaned up. This is your rear brake assembly. Believe it or not, a lot of people never take these apart. They just don't bother. But it's actually a service item that you typically want to grease every once in a while. Um, this pin here, Go ahead and just fill that cavity with grease all the way around. And then the last little bit of grease onto the, um, the shafts here. So, and sometimes they have a knurled end and you may need to uh, put a little bit of grease or uh, you need to put the knurled end at the top. And I'm starting on the side of the brake pedal that only has the one hole. Get that in place. This one's going together pretty, pretty smooth here. I think the later brake pedals had the knurled um, end and they, they take a lot more force to tap in, you know, so that this side doesn't come out. And that's real smooth, buttery. It's all good there. We're gonna put the newer style cable. This is the cable with the loop. I haven't put the spring in. Go ahead and feed the, the cable through the little hole here. Get my pin. Put a small amount of grease on this little end in here. Same with the pin. The pin goes in from this end. There'll still be just enough room to get our spring in. Just makes it a lot easier if you don't have the uh, spring in place. Uh, this is the original cotter pin. I always just recommend starting with new cotter pins because they're just a metal part, you know, that's there to, to lock something in place. And the more times you flex them, the, the weaker they, they can get. So go ahead and pop the pin through. And this one's, you know, such a light force that oftentimes you don't even need a, a needle nose or anything. You could just, Go ahead and do it by hand. 
And you want to wrap those ears all the way around so it's not likely to, to uh, get caught up on anything. So now that will keep that pin from popping out. Uh, we'll get the cable, the spring in there, the long end, kind of slip it underneath the spring there. Use a needle nose, get this hooked onto the that lever in there or the other part of the pin. And pretty simple to do. And now we could pull the lever up, grasp this. And now the lever's all assembled. Um, without the switch, we're gonna grease up this cable. I tend to like to use the much thicker grease for the rear brake cables. This waterproof grease. Uh, this cable's located lower. It's more prone to rust, you know, from the water getting up into the thing. So just put a nice heavy layer. I mean, it's your foot pressure on this, uh, this brake. So it's no, it's pretty easy to actuate. And underneath the frame, you can see the rear brake cable housing. Typically those housings hold up for quite a long time. Feed the cable through. And it looks like it popped through on the other side. And then we'll go ahead and reassemble the, um, the switch and put the pedal back in place. So we got our brake switch, the rubber gasket, that's still in good, good condition, and the screw. So we'll go ahead and thread that all through because trying to get this all to line up later is not gonna be an option. Uh, go ahead and you may wanna actuate the brake pedal a little bit. I'm kind of using my, the palm of my hand to do so and get the screw started. So have your seven millimeter wrench ready to go after you get this hand tightened. And voila, brake pedals all assembled. And we see the cable goes right in there. Um, you may need to pull the housing, help the housing along. And here's the tricky part is it's a combination of getting this up in there and getting the brake pedal. And, and this is the early style pedal. So it's a little more difficult. The later pedals, they had a different design to the head that pops through the frame. So they were a little easier to, to, to assemble. They probably realized these took a lot longer when they were assembling the scooters and redesign that casting. But it's kind of a unique characteristic of these first year P200s. So I want to leave those parts kind of neat. Uh, I got all my hardware I saved for the brake pedal itself. Need a 10 millimeter wrench and, um, and socket. Uh, this is the, the small screw with the lock, lock tab washer. I don't think this tab is available. It's only used on the first year P200s. So you got to make sure that's in place. If you don't have that tab, I would just put Loctite on the screw because you do not want that screw coming loose. Uh, if the pedal gives out while you're riding or that pin slides out, you're going to lose your brake. So got that one started. You can see the tab washers right there. I have some new flat washers for these screws or, or the, the bolts are still in really nice shape. They go in from the top side, both both bolts and a, a pair of lock washers that I'll use from the bottom side here. So go ahead and get those started. And I have new washers, so those aren't gonna get used. And yeah, you don't wanna tighten one of these first. You kinda wanna get them all started. Could even turn the scooter on, verify the brake light still works. I'm certain it will. There's... So with the, the outer two, you wanna hold the bolt. You don't wanna turn the bolt because it will scratch the paint from the top and use your ratchet to tighten up the, the nuts. And if you wanna torque them, they're about seven and a half foot pounds. This little wrench will do the job just fine, so. Yeah. 
And the last one, get right under there. And once it's tightened, you can fold over this little steel tab. And again, you won't see that on the later ones. The later scooters, they just have a bolt with the lock washer and that's all that holds it. Here's the brake pedal rubber. This is the early style brake pedal rubber. The later P200s have the hole in the center. And like I said, the pedal goes through a lot easier. Um, this is the same design as what's used on the Primavera and Vespa 90 actually. That's where this uh, pedal design came from. So just like the clutch cable, we'll go ahead and feed this through this much larger rear brake cable adjuster. And that's all, it's been reset. Um, if you have used brake shoes in there, you probably just wanna leave it. You typically reset them when you have fresh brake, brake shoes in there. And we'll go ahead and feed this through. Let's see if I can find the hole on it. I ah, think I found it, good. Feed that through and push the housing up into the frame. And this uh, fourth hand tool just barely will fit onto the cable for the rear brake cable. And you pretty much see how I'm going all the way in and then back off just a little bit because you got to have some free play in that pedal. Take a 13 millimeter wrench. And this one you can go rather tight with it because it is the rear brake cable. You don't want this slipping and it's pretty strong. You don't want to over tighten it because it is a hollow bolt with the cable going through, it will snap. And then we'll move up to our brake pedal and see how the free, pl free play is on this brake pedal here. So check the uh, free play and that's about it. You want it to go down about 25 millimeters or an inch. Uh, if it does any less, your brakes are gonna drag or the brake light won't come on. So that's where you want that. And we'll come back to tucking the cable back into the clip or clipping it a little shorter and soldering the end. So let's put the throttle tube back together. You see I cleaned it all up. All you want is a really, really light coat of grease on this. Very, very light. Doesn't need much grease at all. If you have too much grease, it actually, it kind of causes too much friction in the throttle assembly. And then go ahead and grease up these Inside both of these, they just need a small amount of grease. Make sure you have on this the flat washer. There's a small flat washer on the tube that stays first. And you can put a small amount of grease on that washer as well. And you can see the windows. This inner window faces towards the back and the front window goes there. So it slides in just easy. Uh, do want to put the uh, spring in there. And you can see that little hole is what lines up with the spring. And that's what I'll do is wind this around. See how, the direction of winding this? And you want to make sure that clip falls in place and hold it right there. See how the return spring's now working? With that hole kind of at the top, I wound it enough where if you wind it one more turn, it's not gonna turn, it, well, the spring will bind up, or if it's not enough, you know, the spring's just loose like that. So the spring kind of is tightened up at that point. Next, we'll take your wave washer and the flat washer and make sure a little grease on all these parts as well as they do uh, slide. Don't mind the cable, it's in the way. Take our uh, nylon pulley. Uh, still got a little bit of grease. I didn't really clean that all that much. It's not really needed. Pop the cable in as I'm holding the lever. Let's see if I can do this here. So I'm going to pop the barrel of the throttle cable in. Obviously a little easier if you have the whole throttle cable out, but I kind of decided to do this a little after the fact. So. so there's a hole here that will line up with the tube in the middle. 
and you're going to need to look directly down the tube to see when you sight that hole. It takes a little bit of practice. So I have a pick and I have the pin ready. So kind of have your pin ready to go. Uh, you're going to need to look from the top and sight this hole that's on the tube. You see that hole on the tube with the hole on the nylon sleeve. And it's kind of a difficult task to do. And I found you could, you get it really close, you could side it down, and then you could use a punch, or a, not a punch, a um, pick to kind of center it. Hold it all in place, and while you have the hole exposed, you can now put the pin down through. And it takes a little bit of wiggling, there we go. And then you gotta sight the bottom part of the pin. It's gonna go right through the steel tube. Oh, it seems like an easy job, but for some reason this takes a little bit of finesse to get, get this pin through. And then the spring, spring section of the clip will just fold right over the nylon tube, just like, just like that. Much better. So the lubricated cable in place, such as a throttle cable, you could use a motorcycle uh, cable lubing, uh, this little apparatus here. And it pretty much just tightens around the cable. They still leak a little bit, but they'll kind of do the trick. And with these small cables, you kind of go all the way to the end. Go ahead and tighten this clamp down. And it will make a little bit of a mess that we'll probably have to wipe up. Tighten it down as much as you can. And on this end, there's this two rubber plugs and the top rubber plug has a little hole. And we'll take a thin cable lubricant. You know, it's just uh, something that's thicker than WD-40, but not like a thick white lithium grease. And just watch your eyes, because it's gonna wanna probably spray up like that. Oops, kind of getting the camera there. I'll put my finger over it. And you kind of just gotta make a mess and this will allow it to flow down the cable that smells good. And we'll wipe up some of the mess for right now and hopefully the cable's a lot smoother. Yeah, that's way better. That's all it took. I can tell that's a lot smoother. The cable's returning, no issues now. That's the problem with, you get an older bike, the grease just everywhere is just dried up and it causes everything to not have a very good motion on it. We'll do the same with the shift cables. I'll go ahead and disconnect the shift cables. I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but it's pretty much the same idea. So just like the clutch cable, we're gonna go ahead and thread the front brake cable. The difference, the front brake cable does have this little top hat thing uh, that resides underneath here. It either falls out when you take the cable out or it's still stuck in place. We'll go ahead and put that on the top of the short cable since this has the, uh, the brake switch. I'm gonna go ahead and feed the cable through and it will pop right out of this window in the throttle tube. The top hat drops on and then the short cable. And for the first little bit, you don't really need grease as the, um, you know, the, the vast majority of the cable we're gonna end up throwing away. So kinda you wanna look at it from underneath here, make sure that little top hat sits in place. And you take your, if it still has this, which is remarkable, a lot of times people got rid of the front brake switch because it's, it's simpler to change a cable and the, or the replacement European cables didn't come with the, um, the right length, so they would change them out or throw that away. Uh, next, we'll get some light grease and start to lubricate the cable. And here's our front brake cable. And I'll lubricate this end because I wanted to get a, a small amount of grease on the, um, that short end of the cable. And at this point, just start threading it through and you'll have a lot of slack, I can tell you that, because the same cable that you use for the, the clutch, so. At this point, I think it's about to pop through. There we go. 
And if you're having trouble, say, see how it's binding right there? The key to addressing that is just shift the position of the housing. See how I move the housing down? Now the cable will go right through. So that's a little tip right there that you may be wondering why you're struggling with it. So now we can pull the slack of the cable down through here. Uh, get that, this cable engaged into the brake switch. And see how we have too much cable slack, cable housing slack? Go back down here and just pull it down until it's about like such. And take your lever, just like the clutch. Feel like this is redundant, because it is redundant, you can just skip passes. That's the wonder of YouTube. Take your two washers, wave washer on top, small flat washer on the bottom, slip them in place. Your Phillips screwdriver, kind of get them all lined up. And start the nut. I'll put a wrench on it, just to do something a little different. Last time I used the, the socket, it's too tight here. See how they back it off about a quarter turn, hold the screw and go ahead and tighten the nut. So we got our cleaned up back plate and it's all cleaned up in the parts washer as much as I want to clean it. If you scrub it too much, you'll take that uh, finish off it, the paint finish. Uh, I want to take the the blue waterproof grease that tends to be the best grease for this, this hub. These needle bearings, we'll go ahead and pack these with grease. There's a pair of them in there, so make sure you get plenty of grease down into the other bearing in here. So these don't really see that much load, just they rotate a little bit whenever the suspension's acted on. Um, that's pretty straightforward for that part. Um, we'll go ahead and put the pivot pin. This was our major problem was how tight this pivot pin is. So look at that, now it goes in and out, no problem. Uh, just put a small amount of grease all over this. Even a little bit where the brake pads will ride, the, the, the heels of the brake shoes will, will ride. Man, I call them brake pads again, what's my problem? And the lever goes in like such. You got the return spring, which may not be present on your model. So drop that down, engage the return spring. Look at that, it actually returns. Works like it should. So no problems there. Uh, we'll take the little seal that goes in from this end. Don't have time for a Ziploc baggie, sorry. Small amount of grease on the seal. And oftentimes you could press these in. If not, just take a mallet. Make sure you hit it square. or use a socket. That was not probably the most ideal solution for putting a seal in, but didn't want to spend any more time on it, so. And go ahead and flip the, this over. We're gonna go ahead and put the speedometer drive back together. It's in this cavity here. So I just pack that cavity with some grease. Find your speedometer drive gear. It's two ends, the side with the larger hole goes outside, the smaller hole goes towards the inside. Just grease this up. Take the steel slug, 
Doesn't need much grease on that. And go ahead and slide that right in. Like such. It's going to obviously s s smear some of that grease out. No, no problems there. Saw how much grease was in there to begin with. There's kind of a residual amount of grease and that just keeps the bearings lubricated and uh, displaces the water. Uh, you got your seal. These sometimes are a little bit difficult to put in. Uh, typically I'd take a, a, a large piece of steel and press it down. But let's just see if we could just tap it in. It's not a critical seal. Definitely don't want to use a ball end. And I bet you I'm not going to be able to do it, so maybe I will. I don't want to distort the seal. Wow, that was remarkable. I, said, I was assuming I wasn't going to be able to get that seal in with just the tapping it in. So tap that all the way in. And it does sit on a, uh, there's a ridge. You can't overdrive them if you beat the crap out of it damage it and overdrive it, but that's not the idea. And take just a big uh, finger of uh, grease, just kind of smear it on the inside of this, um, this uh, the lip of the seal. And that will just keep your speedometer drive all lubricated. And be careful on, see how I got grease on the outside? I want to wipe that up because that grease might get flung around and on onto the brake brake shoes. The idea of the seal is it keeps the grease on one end and keeps the brakes dry. So, all right, now we got two more washers. You have the sh thin, wa thin shim washer. Put a small amount of grease on this and moving on to the axle of the, the scooter. Go ahead and slide that on there. You have the O-ring. And there's two ways to go about it. You can put the O-ring here, or sometimes, see if we could pull this off and put it on this side. So the idea is the O-ring wants to stay out of the way until you have it assembled. So looks like I might be able to hold it there. So see how I'm holding the O-ring there? Keeping it out of the way. And we'll go ahead and take the plate may want to put a small amount of grease on the axle shaft. Not too much because it will just smear it off when you slide the seal on. So I'm holding the O-ring and I'm going to go ahead and slide this in place. And once it's pretty much in place, holding there, the O-ring stay in put. No problems there. So the flat of the washer, you have the arm facing down the flats about like such. And you can get in there with a needle nose, kind of feel your way around. Uh, the thing is not going to seat unless you find that flat on the, on the washer. You know, ironically, if you take apart a brand new modern Vespa, they have this exact same design, but just it's got a disc brake carrier. So take our brand new E-clip. Now that we know that's seated, there's a sharper end of the E-clip where it's stamped. I'm gonna have that facing out. You can kind of feel it with your finger. If it's sharper, that's the side you went out. Um, go ahead and get that in your uh, pliers. Don't stretch it any more than you need to. And I'm using my fingers to kind of help guide it in there. So. And you're going to want to hear it snap into place because if it doesn't snap in, it's not all the way seated. And watch that O-ring on the other side. If that O-ring got sneaky on you and slipped, slipped in place, then you, um, you have a problem. And the last little bit, sometimes you could just use a needle nose to get it in place. And the, the way to check it, the hub is not coming off, so we're good. Take your pair of uh, bolts and wind that up, get it engaged into the shock absorber. Bolts from the, the front of the scooter and the split washers and nuts from the rear.
All right. Now it's time to put the brake shoes in place. Real small amount of grease on these uh, pins. Again, a little bit on the flat, which I already did. Make sure there's nothing more. Wipe your hands off really good. You don't want to have grease on your hands when you put new brake, brake shoes on. You contaminate the brake, brake shoes are just not going to be very effective. So your new brake shoes have a pair of steel heels on them. Nice thing about the original Piaggio brake shoes is the spring will just thread right in without issues. So, so just like that, go ahead and start with the top one. Just put it onto the pin. So take this heel of the brake shoe, position it on this pivot right here, and go ahead and sight from the other side your, uh, the brake shoe onto the pivot and just carefully tap this in place. And once you have it tapped in there, bingo. Your Omega Cliffs, typically you don't even need a needle nose to put them on. Let's see if I can pull, push these right on. Just with uh, the strength of my fingers there. Kind of hurts a little bit, but. And before we even hook up the front brake cable, we're gonna get the, um, the hub on there. I wanna hook up my speedometer cable, wipe off any excess grease, move this back to this side. Probably should have hooked up the speedometer cable first, but no big deal. Rubber uh, grommet drops into the, the well here. I'll take our plate. You have a little bolt with a split washer, the cable retaining plate, still in really nice shape. And we'll just get that started. So again, that was a little easier if I did that before I put the hub on. So go ahead and engage the speedometer cable, thread it into the bottom of the speedometer. You have a lot more room to work when the cable's disconnected at the bottom. I did lubricate the cable. I think I did that in one of the prior videos. I, Kind of showed that. Well, for the time being, we'll go ahead and pull this down. Pull, is what I'm doing is pulling the speedometer cable, pretty much just to pull this whole handlebar cover back home. And I'm not going to put the screws in just yet. I want to make sure everything works because the last thing you do is you end up putting it all back together and something doesn't work up there. And you want to make sure everything works before that uh, those screws go in that headset. So. Um, Go ahead and engage the cable. Sometimes it's a little difficult. It's easier whenever the hub's not there because um, the cable can turn freely, so no, no issues there. And you can get a little wrench in there and tighten this nut or even do it with a little socket. So with the cable seat seated, you can go in there and tighten this all the way down. You just barely get a ratchet in there. And we'll go ahead and roll this O-ring right here. See this O-ring that I rolled back on? Just roll it right into the groove. The inner brake cable, just for the time being, we'll just thread it right through the, um, the cable adjuster. So whenever you put new brake shoes in, you wanna scuff up the inside of the brake drum steel liner. So just regular 80 grit paper. Kind of just go all the way around. You can see it's got a little bit of rust because it's just bare steel and the only takes the, just the moisture in the air to kind of put a surface rust on it. You can take brake parts cleaner and spray this all out. It's just dust or take a really clean rag and just wipe it out. Just make sure there's no grease in there. Uh, finger some fresh grease into the needle bearing. You know, just something like that. You know, take care not to get on your brake liner. And that's pretty much all. It doesn't matter if there's a little grease on the outside because that the speedometer gear 
we'll pick up some of the grease. I'll put a small amount of grease just to prime it. And now it's time to uh, put the hub back on. Go ahead and let's get it lined up with the axle shaft. And that was a little too easy. And as you're rotating the tire, kind of hit it because that helps the, the, the speedometer drive. Engage, you know, it's got to engage with that worm gear. There we go. I think it's. And my torque wrench set to around 30 foot pounds. 30 to 45 foot pounds is all you need to torque this to. And just keep on rotating the tire. I'm going reverse with the tire. And it just helps, helps the gear engage without binding up on the gears with that. There we go. Set this up. And this is the old style one. Usually I use my digital one, but this one was handy. Hear that click. And we are good. So you see that little slot in the, um, in the axle shaft? in this brand new nut. I have a special punch that I kind of made a rectangular tip. You could use a regular uh, punch. It will work just as well. Take a, a framing or a mechanics hammer and give it just a good little deform. See how that's deformed into that, uh, that groove there? And that's what locks it in place. Very critical that you do that. And that's exactly why you want to use a new nut. Last thing you need to have is the front tire come off. Now we can put the, the cap on. Don't really need to put any grease. I would call it a grease cap, but it's more of a beauty cap. Not really any grease behind it because you got a shielded bearing. And we'll get the front brake cable hooked up. So take the cable in between the plates. We'll go ahead and thread that through this hollow screw. You got to find the hole in the, the, the hollow pinch screw here. And see how there's some adjustment there? Just like the rear brake, go ahead and use a, a tool. Sometimes you gotta exercise the cable. Okay, we're good. So pretty much go all the way tight and then back off just a little bit. And I don't know what the measurement is, but And if you want to just test it, see how just tighten it a little bit. Go up and check your lever. That's a little on the tight side. And believe it or not, that cable will, and the brake shoes, once they see it in, that lever is probably going to come back. But I'm going to back it off just a little bit. The way you could do that is just put some pressure on this. It's a lot easier because you have access. And just let it out just a little teeny bit and then go back to give it a, to see how that feels. That's better. A little bit more free play. You can see how much that moves. And I'm certain the brake light's uh, actuating. And just snug that up. Don't, don't over tighten it. That bolt will break very easily. So take some type of flux, you know, a soldering flux. It's going to be pretty difficult to solder without the flux on the cable. Um, like I said, if you don't want to do this, you could just trim the cable, but it's going to always have like a ratty end on it. So you got a paste style flux. Uh, don't want to touch this with your fingers, but just smear it. We're going to cut the cable probably around there. So I'll just put some flux there. I just got regular rosin core solder, which is typically for electronics, but you know, it's a lead solder, so it will work fine. And the torch can be very down of the, you know, it doesn't have that, you know, it has more than enough temperature. Keep it away from your wheel or tire and go ahead and heat the tip of the, um, the flux and go ahead and solder that in. Just like that, see how I'm burning the tire? Don't really want to do that. And you can see that the end is all tinned. Uh, the dripping, because of the solder isn't going to hurt anything, so wipe that off. 
And where it has the shiny solder, that's where you want to cut with preferably like aircraft pliers, but you do with a nice set of dikes as well. So now that the cable's all nice and see it doesn't unfray or anything. You can also put like a cable in like from a bicycle, but I don't know, this is the way they did it from the factory, so that's the way I like it. Clean up the hub, any grease I left behind. And there we go, oh my gosh, the brake feels like a brand new scooter now. Feels perfect. We'll move on to the back, let's flex up those cables and trim those as well. So we'll do these cables. One thing to keep in mind if you're doing this with a torch like I am, uh, make sure there's no traces of gas under here. Uh, very likely there's gas underneath the motor or something. Um, if you have a heavy duty solder iron, it would do the job just as well, but just not as quick as a little torch. But um, You know, having flames around gasoline, you know, that's not the best idea, but uh, there's no leak gas, so no problems there. Wipe off the excess flux. And where it has this tinned or soldered in, tri trim, and you can leave that tail just like such. Uh, this cable, you could do that, but it's, it's the correct length. So it's what I do. This one's a lot harder to move around because it's just very thick. And just go ahead and hook it into that little thing, just like that. That's all you need to do. And now the rear brake cable set. So front cable and whole brakes all overhauled. It feels perfectly smooth. Clutch cable smooth and nice. Already has a little bit too much free play, but I'll take it on some test ride miles before I make another adjustment to the, the clutch. Rear brakes working good. Front both brake switches are working, so we know we're all good there. Pull the choke, turn the fuel on, and see what happens. See if the clutch engages. Pretty good. So put, I'm gonna put my foot on the brake here. Let's see what the... Yeah, clutch is working. Goes right into neutral, no problem. Again, I'll adjust that free play once I get it going. So the next step, I'll get a seat on this thing, take it for a first test ride. Uh, in the next video, you can watch for the test ride and we're gonna do all the final touches to the scooter. And that includes replacing the column lock, the seat lock, a couple little rubber bits and a final detailing on it. And then I'll take it on like an extended test ride. 20 miles, maybe 50 miles. I don't know. I enjoy taking bikes I fixed up uh, on a good shakedown ride, as I call them, not just a test ride. Test ride's just around the block. Uh, you do a big build like this. You want to do a shakedown, but don't get too far from home if any um, problems arise. Hope everybody liked that video. End up turning it into a lot longer video than I thought. Like all my videos, they turn these long videos. Um, whether you're a novice and just getting into it, hope you found this useful, or maybe you're experienced. Maybe I had some tips that you haven't seen before. I hope that helps out. You know, there's just some fine little things I've learned from other people. Somebody else will show me a job and like, oh, man, I've been doing it the same way for 15, 20 years. Oh, there's always a better way out there. Um, I never have time to do any comments, but if you have ideas, to help people out, always feel free to comment in the videos, help, help the others out. This is a robot for Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. So if you're looking for any of the parts used in this build, look at the description. I have all our ScooterWest.com part numbers. Check us out. Subscribe to our channel if you're new to our channel. Um, if you just stumble across this video, you can watch the five prior videos and the next two videos following. Uh, it's January 2020. Uh, next video will be out in another week. Till next time, Robot here.